Hey, in this video I'm going to show you how to use Node, React, AWS DynamoDB, and um, GitHub OAuth login. It's a boilerplate code, it's a starting point it, just to get you started on a project and not have to worry about you know, login or setting up AWS uh, DynamoDB, everything's kind of set up. Um, and we'll kind of walk, I'll walk, walk you through it and show you how, how it, every, what's going on essentially with everything. I should just start by saying that it's been about six weeks since I posted my last video. Uh, please subscribe. Um, thanks for waiting around. Um, I just need some time off. Uh, if you want some updates, I usually, if I'm going to post, I'll, I'll post to Twitter. So you, um, you can find my Twitter uh, URL in the description. But let's get started with this. So if you look at my screen right now, I have here, this is the boilerplate code I was referring to. And pretty much what's going on here is it's Node, React, Database, and GitHub OAuth. I provide you with some instructions. So the very first step that we're going to do is actually set up the local uh, DynamoDB. So we could go to AWS, the con like the actual console, and set that all up. I have another video on that. But we're only going to do local development, so it's actually free. <laughs> so what you'll need to do is, I am currently, I have mine all set up here. I'll open up the terminal here. I have mine set up in the root, so if I do an LS here, you can see it right here, uh, DynamoDB. So if I just switch into this folder, I won't switch into the folder, but just do a list of the contents of that folder. Uh, it's the contents of what you'll download in the jar, essentially. And with that, I'm just going to do an rm-rf, and I'm just going to delete that. So I'm going to be at the same starting point as everyone else, so I should head to this URL. Uh, this GitHub link, link is in the description. Uh, head to this URL, and uh, it'll say, offer you to download um, Dynamo here. Sorry, I want to use uh, Dynamo downloadable. I want let's say US West here. It's gonna download my local copy of it. Again, I'm just gonna go to my root. create a folder called Dynamo, you can do this all in the command line, Dynamo DB, take this, it'll zip, unzip the folder here, and as you can see, all you need to do is drop this, well, I'm going to drop all contents, there's a Dynamo DB local jars, which is the important part, and with that, I'm closing it, reopen up my terminal, I do ls, I have my Dynamo DB folder there, just switch into it. And I have my jar. So what I'll need to run to run it locally is this one command line here. Um, as you can see, I point to the path, which is the same as uh, just in that directory, and it's now running on port 8000. So Dynamo DB is now running on my computer. So I'm just going to open up a new uh, terminal tab. Uh, you can open up a new window as well. I'm going to CD over to my desktop because this is where I'm going to be working. Make this a little bigger. This up, and so a couple things I'm going to, have to do. First, I'm going to, I'm going to clone the uh, the repository. So I'm going to hit the green button at the top, hit uh, the clone, do a git clone, and paste the URL, and then it will kind of load here. Okay, so this is done. I'm just going to cd into the project. All right, so now I have all the contents of this project now sitting on my own computer. First uh, instinct with it with a node project is just to do your npm install. That would be correct, and this is going to take some time. So I'm going to kind of explain what's going on in the rest of it. Um, we're going to open up this project. I had it open 10 seconds ago. Let me just reopen it. I'm using a text editor called Atom. So let's open up the project, and I'll kind of explain what's going on. Here's the project. So we'll have to do one thing. We'll have to change this config.example.js to config.js. But there's some other things going on this in this folder here called tables, and so tables. I have structures.js here, and pretty much here, there's um, this is the the Dynamo object structure I'm going with here. It's uh, user ID, which is the primary key, and I'll show you how, where you can find that out. And same with the email. There's user information that comes with the GitHub, and then there's email verif is the email verified, um, the the email associated with that account, and the user uh, user's name based on their GitHub. So, as you can see, primary keys are user ID, 
and then the session token is also a primary key. And this is the two tables that we're going to create. All the other attributes that, um, since it's a NoSQL database, it's just a document. It's like MySQL, uh, not MySQL. It's like a MongoDB. It's very flexible. So with this, we're gonna have to click here. Uh, we're gonna have to rename this file to be uh, config.js. And in here, include include the uh, instructions on set how to set the AWS CLI tool and how to use it in production. Um, table names are all defined in here. Local storage key is defined in here. I recommend changing all those. Um, your local config files are all used, so depending if you're in dev, it makes the assumption that you're on local, so it'll run um, essentially looking for the local instance of DynamoDB, and if you're in production, uh, it'll look for the remote one. And then we'll also use your GitHub client ID and your GitHub secret, so we'll have to create those. So let's head over to GitHub, and on the top right corner, head over to settings. Head down to uh, sorry developer settings, not applications. And new OAuth application, and we'll just call this test demo. Hopefully, I don't have another one. And this will be on port 8080. That's what it is by default. And as you can see, I've done this all before. The callback URL will be local localhost 8080 slash sign in slash callback. I'll show you all this code. And you hit register. And so this will generate a client ID here. Which I'm going to copy and paste it here, and then do the same with this client secret. And this is essentially just used to um, OAuth your application. And the reason why I've put it into this config file is that it doesn't get pushed with your Git, uh, with your Git project. So as if it's public, like this one is, um, it's actually Git ignored, so you can't see it in this folder structure. But there is a config.js file there. Hit save, and uh, I'll show you. The other thing is I don't want to. If these ever change, I don't have to retype everything. So for example, um, on the home page, I refer to these these uh, these um, values. So I'm, I import them here, and I refer them down here. And that way, if they ever change, I don't actually change anything. Hopefully, this is done installing. Okay, it is. We should do npm. We should do clear. And we're gonna switch back over to our readme file. We'll continue on with our setup. So here we have to set up. The actual tables because they're not created. So if we head over to our um, terminal, um, assuming you have the AWS CLI tool installed, I recommend installing it. So if I do AWS Dynamo DB and I do uh, list tables, I'll probably get no tables back. So nothing's created. So what I'll have to do is run this script and it'll take um, the given the given table structure, and it will uh, create a table using that. I'm going to copy both these lines here. First line here, and so I just have the changes to be uh, change all of this since I'm sitting in the folder to a dot. It's going to be I'm just going to use a relative path. Changes to a dot. All right, I'm going li to run line one, which is going to create my first table, the user table that has the primary key as user ID, and then I'm gonna run my user session creation after. Copy that. You have to make sure that this is running your, your DynamoDB. I'll switch back to my pager. All right, I'm just gonna paste that in and run it. Um, and it's created it, so if I run the previous command, the list tables, um, now I have users tab, and now I have to run the other one. Run that one, paste it in, run it, and then let's do the DynamoDB list tables. Now I have both of them. Perfect. So with that, we can begin our sign uh, sign in because we've set up our GitHub uh, client ID, we've set up our GitHub secret, and we've set up our, our DynamoDB tables. So now we can actually run the code. So we should do an npm run start dev. Before I hit enter, I'm going to explain where I got that from. So you scroll down, uh, it tells you to do an npm install, and then to run on local, you should do here, this one. And to do in production, you should use npm start. So we're just going to hit enter. It's going to start up on point, port 8080. It's going to compile the webpack after. So 8080. Compile the webpack. We can head over to our browser. 
uh, localhost 8080. And as you can see, we have a sign in with GitHub button. And um, my client ID had ABC in it. And you can see as I hover over, that had ABC in it. So I'm just going to hit sign in. It's going to ask me to authorize uh, my username for test demo. I'll say authorize. It's going to go through. It's going to say logging in. And now it says logged in. And essentially, so that we're completely logged in on our GitHub OAuth application. Uh, that was relatively simple. Um, I could go through more about what's going on. Uh, if you want to know more, uh, if you look, go to server and then routes and then API. There's two files. There's something called fruits, which is just your temporary um, getters and setter. Um, you put and get objects from Dynamo, just as an example. But in the sign sign in, there's your entire uh, request going through. So uh, the console should have logged is dev because we're currently in the dev environment. And it sends a post request to GitHub, gets back an access token. That access token uh, gets the user uh, and, and also gets the user's emails. And then essentially returns everything and saves it into the, sorry, no, here, this checks for the ex user if it exists. And then signs them in or signs them up into our database. So with this, with this, uh, as you can see in my, in my database, I'm calling the sign in API and it's in is dev. So if I switch to a new tab, uh, just because the server is still running there, um, on both tabs, there's the Dynamo server and then there's the uh, node server there. I switch into a new tab, I should do an AWS. Um, we'll start with Dynamo DB list tables so I can get my exact table names. And then now that I have my table names, I can just do. Uh, I'm going to do actually on the user sessions to show that someone's actually signed in. I'm going to use Dynamo uh, DB uh, scan, which is going to just return all, all uh, essentially give me a data dump. And I'm going to say uh, table name, and I'm going to paste in the user sessions. So it gave me a data dump here. I'm uh, just uh, hiding my email here. Um, but so essentially, it, it provides us with our user feedback. Uh, you can look at the tokens ID XKG. If I go to my Chrome and I open in my do my inspect here. I would type in uh, local local storage. I hit enter now. Just hiding my uh, additional tokens here, but um, so if you can see, there's the Node React AWS DynamoDB, and then there's token, and then there's the XKG stored in tokens. So that's how I'm checking uh, who's currently logged in. And so with that, uh, pretty pretty simply, uh, we have um, we've completed everything that's kind of required to run this code, and this handles a um, o GitHub OAuth login. I, I didn't get too much into the how AWS DynamoDB works. I also didn't get too much into how Node and React works. I have the other videos on that, so if you take a look at my channel, that might really help. Thanks for watching. Um, I'll come up with another video next Wednesday.